Just a year ago, the folks at Onroke Automotive North America were going full bore building these exciting new cars, getting set to bring international Formula 4 racing to America. Uh, what they've done at this price point is unbelievable. To have a, a modern you know, carbon fiber chassis, safe, uh, reliable, you know, a Honda power plant, a six-speed sequential paddle shift transmission. There's a lot of technologies which is going to be relevant to a driver's career. And as they move up through the ranks, be it sports car racing or formula car racing. At first, the dream seemed in jeopardy. Parts were hard to come by. Other startup issues caused the season opener to be pushed back twice. But when the competition finally began, it was everything that was promised. Tight racing, breathtaking moments, and a perfect proving ground for the stars of tomorrow. It'll be a very challenging 2017 schedule. A year ago, the series began with five race weekends, 15 rounds. This year, it grows by one to six weekends, 18 half-hour races to make up the 2017 F4 United States Championship. The young drivers will have quite a range of tests. The series opens this year at Homestead Miami Speedway, where it closed out 2016. Then in the month of June, we'll go to the road course at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Quite a place for these young drivers to test their skills. From there, it's on to Canadian Tire Motorsports Park. First trip ever for the series outside the United States. We used to call it Mo Sport. And then it's on to Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course in Lexington, Ohio. One of the home tracks, certainly, for American Honda and Honda Racing at HPD. From there, Virginia International Raceway for the first time ever in the month of August. And the season wraps up at Circuit of the Americas in Austin, Texas this fall. The home, of course, of Formula One in the United States. It should be an exciting, challenging, and tough season for these drivers and their teams. Welcome back to F4 U.S. Championship today. We're at Honda Performance Development in Santa Clarita, California. We're in the shop area where those bulletproof K24 motors are built for the F4 Championship. In fact, the assembly takes place about 30 feet or so from where we're standing right here. We often show you these amazing Honda power plants at the racetrack, but our cameras were not allowed inside the engine development area of HPD. We were, though, able to talk to one of the engine gurus responsible for taking the street engine from a Civic and transforming it for racing. This is, a first off, a brand new engine that's for the Type R, fitted with a dry sump system, uh, very, very strong oil pumps, and then additional uh, plumbing and, and race features. And then because it has such a, a potential for flexibility, it seemed to be the best candidate to go in those cars. Very tight package, very light, uh, great power to weight ratio. We've uh, taken this engine and then uh, decontented it. This is an engine that comes with a turbo. Um, it's a very strong foundation for naturally aspirated. Of course, it is tuned accordingly. Uh, the, the trick was, uh, since these engines are designed to run boosted and then uh, they run naturally aspirated, there are some subtleties that needs to be looked into, especially on the calibration side. And then uh, we found that those engines actually accommodate uh, fine tuning uh, appropriately and then very, very, uh, very robust, very long lasting. So these engines are uh, withstanding without budging up to uh, 6,500 miles, 10,000 kilometers. Uh, last year we had a total of 16 cars. It was the beginning of this uh, race category, and then this year we have up to 33 cars. Clearly it's a good sign that we've done really well with our engine package. We've looked for a, an engine package that has a wide range of power outputs that can accommodate, and then it makes this racing affordable. This is a really good, good engine for entry-level racing at an affordable price. Affordable yet durable components from suppliers like Honda, Pirelli, and JRI are a big part of the rising popularity of the F4 United States Championship. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to another edition of F4 U.S. Championship Today. I'm Rick Benjamin. We're at historic Watkins Glen International in upstate New York this weekend. This is the place that was home to Formula One in the United States for such a long time. Now it's home to the Verizon IndyCar Series. Those two series, of course, the prime destinations for our F4 young guns as they work their way up the motorsports ladder. Before we get going with our coverage of Race Weekend 5 from VIR, a little bit about these race cars. They are single-seat, carbon-fiber, purpose-built race cars. Powered by a 160-horsepower, four-cylinder Honda engine. It's sealed, of course, to level the playing field. They run on Pirelli race tires, slicks, of course, the order of the day. And the drivers are mostly young guns, teenagers for the most part, who are trying to make their way in this sport. The field ready to roll round 13 of the 2017 F4 U.S. season. Picture-perfect race conditions prevailing at Virginia International Raceway. Points leader Kyle Kirkwood wasted no time taking his Cape Motorsports Honda to the lead on the opening lap. 
pole sitter Dakota Dickerson losing second here to Skylar Robinson on lap one. He's feeling pressure meantime from his teammate Brandon Leach. A lap two trouble for race and points leader Kirkwood sliding off track at turn 17. That error handing the lead to Skylar Robinson. Kirkwood's car was OK after the incident. He was able to continue. He'd salvage an eighth after climbing from 27. Meantime, Leach in his Kiwi Motorsport Honda, the 86 car, closed in on Robinson and took over the lead on lap four. But he, too, had a little trouble on the exit of 17. That opened the door for John Paul Southern Jr. in the 61 car from J. Howard Motorsports driver development. He took over the race lead and led three laps until spinning in 11, ending the lead over once more to Skylar Robinson. Meanwhile, Robinson opened up a gap on Baltazar Leguizimon, Brandon Leach, Jordan Sherritt, and pole sitter Dakota Dickerson. Tricky turn 17, though, would get the best of Robinson. He bobbles and slides just off track, allowing Leguizimon to take the lead on lap 13. Robinson would have to settle for sixth in this one. South African Jordan Sherritt and his Crosslink powder coating Honda, meantime, turned in another solid run, passing Kiwi Leach for second. He'd been charging up from his 11th starting spot. And there was more action on the final lap. Dakota Dickerson passing his Kiwi Motorsport teammate Leach to take home third after having fallen as far back as sixth. But at the checkers, it was the Argentinian, Baltazar Leguizimon piloting his Motorola Honda from Miller Vinatieri Motorsports, earning his first victory in the F4 United States Championship. You know, it's just hard work, driving the car more, learning, you know, first year in cars, and yeah, we're getting there slowly but surely, and you know, hopefully we can get more of this. You know, this is an amazing result for us uh, as a new team, as a new driver, and yeah, pretty happy with it. F4 US Championship today is being brought to you by Honda. The F4 United States Championship is powered by Honda and presented by Honda Performance Development. And by SCCA Pro Racing. The F4 United States Championship is accessible, developmental, safe and fun. For more information, visit F4USChampionship.com. Find out how you can get behind the wheel. field rolling off under cool dusky conditions at the picturesque Virginia circuit. As always in F4, drivers qualifying for the second race of the weekend according to their lap times from race number one. That put Kirkwood on pole once more. Off the start, the field racing it at turn two. Skylar Robinson in his Momentum Motorsports two car trying to stay glued to Kirkwood's gearbox, taking second from outside pole sitter John Paul Southern Jr. and Jay Howard's 61 car. The man on the move early was Dakota Dickerson in the Kiwi Motorsports Honda, passing Robinson here for third, and then setting his sights on Southern for second. All of this on lap number one. Championship contender Rafael Forcier, meantime, in his Indy Motorsports Group Honda, had gotten to third early. On lap six, the Canadian Forcier on the button, pulling the trigger, drafting by Dickerson on the backstretch to take over second. South African Jordan Sherrod and his Crosslink powder coating Honda wanting in on the fun too. He passes Dickerson here to get third. Dickerson not able to defend. He would end up fourth in this one. Next lap, Sherrod used the same drafting move on Forcier to pick off second spot before a full course caution out on lap 10 after Jacob Loomis sent his car off the racetrack. These F4 US Championship rounds are 30 minute sprint races. With about four minutes remaining on the clock in the second event of the weekend, the field restarted behind points leader Kirkwood and runner-up Sheriff. On lap 13, Jordan used his drafting technique on race leader Kirkwood to take over the top spot. A lap later, trouble for a couple of the F4 youngsters. Vincent Kristoff in the three car, Ken Vaccaro in the 16 getting together while battling with Christopher Gumprecht in the 97. Vaccaro off course. It causes a full course caution. The 16 machine developing mechanical issues from the contact not able to move. So this one would end under caution with the South African driver getting his first F4 US championship win of the season. I can't believe it. I mean, lucky I just capitalized on Kirkwood's mistake there at the end. And, you know, all credit to the team. All, thanks to everyone who supports. And yeah, it's absolutely incredible. I'm so excited actually, but I don't actually show it, but I'm excited. The question has been on the minds of a lot of our F4 participants, what's next after they graduate from F4? Well, the answer is now apparent. There will be an F3 series in the United States, also powered by Honda, by a more powerful motor. We've got the details for you right here. We've uh, had so much success with the F4 series this year, and our team has really wanted somewhere else to bring their drivers up through. 
So we've, uh, we're going to be bringing on F3 next year, and we are really excited about it. The important thing about our F3 program, it is going to be cost controlled, just like our F4 program is. So uh, it should be a very affordable series to run. It'll be a very nice car to drive. We can't be more excited about it. I mean, all of our partners have been working on it a long time. Uh, it's always been a goal of ours to uh, get the next level. Uh, you know, we every time someone has an interest in the series, they ask me four questions, you know. How does the engine lease work? How much does the car cost? Where are we going to race? And where do I go next? Uh, I haven't been able to answer that fourth question until now, and uh, I think everybody's been waiting for it. And we, we really wanted to make sure that we studied it well and, and had an opportunity, and it's just an overwhelming response, so I think it's going to be fantastic. Certainly going to be more horsepower, uh, so uh, they're, they're, we don't know exactly, approximately maybe 100 more. Uh, so you're going to have to have a little, there'll be more arrow. Uh, so they're going to have to use the throttle, you know, a lot. Uh, there's a lot on the F4 side as far as momentum. But this is going to have power. They're really going to have to manage the power and uh, aero a lot better. We're working on the schedule right now. It is not finalized. Uh, so uh, obviously it presents a challenge to us because now we need more time. And uh, so we're adjusting events and uh, we're hopefully we'll have something here very shortly. Welcome back to F4 US Championship. Today, I'm Kyle Benjamin. Round 15 of the 2017 championship season is about to kick off here at Virginia International Raceway. The front of the field is full of race winners this season. However, there are a couple of new names up towards the top. Tyler O'Connor, first race weekend here. He's on the pole. It's entirely possible we see another first time winner here in round 15. Joining newcomer Tyler O'Connor on the front row for the VIR finale, Skylar Robinson in the Momentum Motorsports 2 car. When the lights went green for race three, O'Connor left two perfect black streaks as the field sped off into turn one. Robinson took advantage of O'Connor's wheel spin to put his Honda into the lead. Hot on his tail, South African Jordan Sheriff. As the field headed into turn 11 on the opening lap, championship leader Kyle Kirkwood in the Cape Motorsports 8 car had his Honda up into third. Once again, Sherrod used the draft to get by Robinson and put his cross-link powder coating Honda into the top spot. But wait, there's more. Still on lap one, Kiwi Motorsports' Brandon Leach and Group A Racing's Jonathan Scarallo get together in turn 14. Meantime, the young Texan, Austin Kazuba, in his own 27 car, had a front row seat to the incident between Leach and Scarallo. And on lap two, Austin found himself in trouble. So essentially, coming into turn one, I got a run on a guy and got overzealous and uh, Got a little, little too deep in on the, on the braking zone and went around and uh, somebody somebody coming in through the field hit us from the rear and that, that was that. That brings about a restart and when the green reappeared, Skylar Robinson got a good jump moving outside to battle with Jordan Sherritt for the lead. The points leader Kirkwood showed some patience here, watching Robinson and Sherritt go wide in turn one. Kirkwood cashing in, moving his eighth car from third to first. On lap seven, Sherritt bobbles entering turn four that allowed Robinson to scoot back into second. Kirkwood, meantime, loving life, starting to stretch his lead on the pair. Late race yellow would wave. No brakes on the 16 car of Kent Vaccaro. Going down into turn one, not the place you want to lose your brakes. A hard hit to be sure. Young Kent taken to a local hospital for evaluation. Good news, though, he's okay. No one had anything in race three at VIR for Kyle Kirkwood. The Cape Motorsports squad cheering their young ace as he picks up another victory, expanding his points lead. So as the VIR weekend draws to a close, Kyle Kirkwood adding to his advantage. 91 points now over runner-up Raphael Forcier. Timo Rieger, who had started the season so strongly, still third, but just two points ahead of Jordan Sherritt. Brendan Leach and Jacob Loomis are tied for fifth. Another guy who's been super consistent as well this season, Jordan Sherritt, all the way from South Africa, team based in Texas. Jordan, this has been a great weekend for you. A, a first, a second, and a third here at VIR. Yeah, you know, we got a whole big bag of points, which is uh, helping us in the championship. I think we're fourth now, and about 43 points behind uh, Forcier. So hopefully, in the two rounds of Coda, we can get that back and maybe finish second in the championship because it might be a bit of a push to get to Kirkwood because he's so far ahead. But yeah. Pretty good weekend. I'm pretty happy with the performance of our team, and thanks to the guys, thanks to everybody. Now this weekend, uh, actually a little special for you because your team's based in Texas, and with the damage and devastation from Hurricane Harvey, you're donating a portion of your proceeds to help those recovery efforts. Yeah, you know, uh, there's so much damage there, and you know, every little bit helps. So I'm glad, glad to 
give them a portion of my money to help them fix and repair Houston. Well, that's all the time we have for this edition of F4 US Championship today, powered by Honda. Next time we speak to you, we'll be covering the action at Circuit of the Americas. The F4 cars and the young drivers will be in action first with the World Endurance Championship. That's in the month of September. And then the season will wrap up with an awesome opportunity. These F4 drivers and teams will race on Formula One weekend at Coda. That's in the month of October. Our coverage coming up right here on F4 US Championship today, powered by Honda. For now, I'm Rick Benjamin. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.